the last video, we saw how to import a background model hmm, exported from 3ds Max into Anima. In this video, we are going to see how we can integrate Anima in our workflow. And as you can see here, we are in 3ds Max. This is a typical work situation. We have this scene. This is a classroom. Okay. This is already modeled, textured, and we will render it using the V-Ray renderer. Okay. My goal hmm, is to integrate some of the character inside the scene to make it even more interesting. Okay, so to do this, the, third, the first thing I need to, to do is to select those elements I want to export from 3ds Max as a background model to Anima. Hmm? I have already prepared this, so as you can see on the left we have the layer manager, so I will select all the layers I want to hide, okay, from the bottom one to the top one, okay, I will hide, hide them and then unhide those I want to export. First thing first is important is to export those these models exactly in place, okay, we don't have to move them and export them, if, if we do this it wouldn't work, okay, and as you can see I have only selected and um, shown those elements I will use, mm, always to keep the triangles amount low. And then if I would need to have some bookshelves or um, walls, well, I could unhide them and then export them again. Okay? But before going to Anima and show you what are the next steps, hmm, I want to show you where we are going. Okay? So I will show you an image I've been preparing, I've been working on. This is a preview image. Okay? So let's take it and this is it. Okay? This is a preview render made in V-Ray, as you can see is a preview render, there is a mm, noise, but this is quite usual at the beginning, okay? So it's quite an in interesting scene, there is everything I need, but I want to place some characters inside to make the scene even more interesting, okay? So what we'll do is just to integrate those characters created in Anima mm, inside this scene and rendering them with V-Ray, and you'll see how easy it is. So, let's go now to Anima and see how to continue. Now, as you can see here, I have already imported all the models, as you can see, and then placed some characters. Those seats are animated characters, and then I have two characters that are ready posed. Now, this is usually not something we would do. I mean, if we want to create a static render, it wouldn't be a problem. Okay, but in case of having an animation uh, render, then we probably uh, what we probably would do is to select those static uh, characters and then hide them, or maybe uh, change them with uh, animated ones standing. Okay, so this is quite uh, important. Now, one important thing I want to show you is to consider that we still have are not ready to. Um, take this information and to another 3D program, okay? An external 3D program. Let's uh, see an example of what I want to show you, okay? So usually in a simulation, mm, we have several simulation elements, okay? So for uh, in this case, we are going to create a single uh, single path, okay? And just talk uh, with it. Now let's create a path. We create all the nodes. Okay, this is just for a second demonstration, don't worry, okay. Then we generate the characters, mm, we adjust the width, and so on and so forth. We already know this. Now, the path is an element that can interact with other simulation elements. And what happens, we know, is that the simulation, the result simulation of the path, depends mm, also on the interaction with other elements. Okay, so what if we want to protect the result we got with this path mm, in a certain way from uh, further changes. So what we can do is to lock this simulation element, okay? And to do this we are going to record all the information of the simulation created on this path mm, inside frames and this is called animation baking. This is a very important process, okay? Um, for first reason is this one I've told you, and to do this, we have to go to the project panel, we select the path, okay, 
and we see we have a look for all the elements at the third column on the right okay the one with the lock icon on top as you can see in the tooltip this is the animation baking baking column okay this is very very important okay this column is the one we are using to bake those animations okay now as you can see all these uh, empty circles are grayed out okay as you can see here and why is that well it's quite logical because if we want to record simulation information and we don't have any simulation information we cannot do this okay as you can see the timeline is empty okay we know that the gray bar on the timeline means the simulation has been calculated so what we need to do is to calculate the simulation and then we will be able to bake the animations okay so this is quite simple something we already know Mm, we go to the play button, we click play, mm, we wait for the simulation to fill all the timeline, as you can see, and then we can stop the, the play, the playback, okay? So now, mm, as you can see, in the project panel, we have all the elements mm, with empty, empty circles activated. All but one, the background model. The background model is not an element containing simulation information. Okay, about characters and so on and so forth. Same thing goes for the avoid areas. Okay, even if they are simulation element, they don't uh, lock. Okay, so now we left click on the empty circle hmm, for the path. And the first question, do you want to bake all the information of this element to frames? Okay, of this scene? Yes, I want. So I will click yes to confirm this uh, option. Okay, and the second question is, are you sure you want to grab all the information of the parent and children mm, recorded on the on frames and then delete everything else? Yes, I want. This is something I need to do for the bake animation. Okay, and then, as you can see, mm, the small empty circle now is filled in the project panel and the path is transparent. Transparent means it, it has been locked. Okay, so we can still select this element, mm, as you can see, I can select them, and here we have an icon, a lock icon on top of each characters, even those mm, ghosts characters. Okay, so this is important. Mm. Now, this is important because this way we can protect this simulation, we can go back, okay, this is no, no, no problem at all, I will show you this, okay, but in this case, mm, is important to do this. We can protect our work, but at the same time, if we want to integrate this work inside a, a 3D external program, we need to be sure, okay, to do to bake all the animation, to be sure that that information you know, we can integrate in 3ds Max, Maya, or Cinema 4D hmm, has been locked. Okay, so what we are importing, let's say, in 3ds Max, is exactly what we were working for, and we can do this one by one for each element. Okay. Or we can do this globally mm, for the old scene, as you can see here mm, in the project panel. Okay, so this is very, very important. Always baking animation is needed to be imported. But before doing this, let's see how we go back. Okay, so we can select this element again, the path. Okay, we left click on, on it in the project panel and another question. Mm. Um, unlocking this will uh, lose all the information recorded in the frames. Yes, this is exactly what I want. Okay, and as you can see in the timeline, the simulation gray bar has disappeared. Okay, so we are exactly where we were before. Mm? So now what I will do is just to delete this element, since this is not something I want to export and use in, uh, in 3ds Max in my scene. Okay, but it was just for the sake of demonstration. So now what I need to do before mm, being able to use this work inside uh, in 3ds Max, I need to lock everything in the scene. Okay, so that is very important. I repeat again. So I will play the simulation to have all the information, as you can see here in the timeline, and then I will left click on the scene lock uh, circle, empty circle, and then again, I will confirm the first question, yes, confirm 
also the second question yes and now as you can see in the project panel all the elements have been grayed out so i still can select them and as you can see also we have all the options grayed out on the properties panel and then i have a lock icon on top of each character okay so this is very important do we need to do something else we need to export this scene no we don't have to do anything else we only need to save the scene okay so we can do this using the control s or the anima menu okay so this is it really very very simple hmm? and uh, to import this information inside 3ds max is something we will see in the next video so we will stop in this here see you soon in the next one